So every time we get the batch of the ARP 3.0, since earlier 2023, it would sell out so fast that unfortunately, every time when I would be ready for to do the right of the review, it would actually sell out online real quick and we would end up with no more. So let's hurry up and get this review done and I can ship this item out. This video is brought to you by Airsoft Master. So basically you have either bought an ARP 3.0 or you're waiting or wanting one. And so basically you looked at this video. Let's go ahead and start off with what's actually in the box. The front of the box basically shows is the actual image of the ARP 3.0 alongside with a nice little leaf stating it's a 3.0 in regards of it. Now, other than that, let's go ahead and flip it to the back end. The back end shows the image of the actual new MOSFET and also a gearbox that they used in the ARP 3.0 known as the MOSFET Integrated Gearbox, or so known as the MIG. And as well to that, you'll notice their new magazines, but we'll get back to that. Wow. So basically in the presentation wise in the actual box itself, you're going to notice that it's in actually encased in this weird felt fabric material, and at the same time, you have this gold plate that's saying that what of the actual series that you got in your ARP 3.0. For example, this one starts with G2208, basically what of the series, and the number it is from basically here, it says this is 324 out of 3000. That's pretty clean. Other than that, let's get into what's in the box. Of course, you have your rifle itself. The new magazine in regards of it, which basically is a 70 rounder, multi-channel. Your sling point in regards of it, the QD sling. And also, here's the tricky part or more like a secret. If you pull out the box, you end up with two things that you need as well. Your jamming rod and your little compensator that comes with it. GNG has done it again, we'll give it more innovations and more stuff that you can get. So the ARP 3.0, let's compare it to the other ones like the 2.0 and the 1.0 and see what's the difference. Starting off with the front, You'll notice in here that you have the original 4.5 inch rail just like the ARP 1.0 and your original M-Lock slots being at the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock positions. But here's the difference of it compared to the others. It basically still has the design of the ARP 2.0 with the lightning cuts around the 45. And as well to that, it still comes with a complement with the actual M-Lock foregrip from G&G. Still short but still keeps it actually a lot more comfortable and stable for using a PCC like this. Again, more extra bonuses that you get from GNG. So what you'll notice other than the front end of the rifle itself is you're going to see the receiver. The receiver is awfully familiar with that reinforced polymer receiver that you'll notice from the actual SR series like such as the SRXL, the SRL SRS, and even the Comet Machine Raider 2.0. So you can't go wrong with it saying what don't fix was not broken in regards to the reinforcement and flexibility of the actual receiver itself. This means a lot when it comes to durability. And as well to that, you still have your trademarks all throughout of G&G &G coming from the lower receiver, the actual rail itself, and of course, your serial number that's on the other side of it. So other than the actual foregrip itself that comes extra, GNG also helps provided with that actually comes with the rifle itself is a front and rear sight. That's going to come in handy, say for example, if you get your sights shot out. As well as that, you can't go wrong with backups. As they say, two is one, one is none. Let's go ahead and go into the actual pistol grip itself. Now, compared to the other ARP 3.0s, or I'm sorry, 2.0s and 1.0s, they're a lot more 45 from their original design in regards of it basically where the motor grip is at. If you notice on here really closely, they brought it more in. Now, the reason why they would bring it more in is because it brings it more of a natural stance into your grip. What that means is you won't have that hard wrist issue in regards of it and actually going into holding the rifle. Now this is just more natural in the stance of it to keep it, again, more of that natural base instead of it being cocked out like this. Again, GNG has done it for stability and as well to that for the comfort of the operator using the rifle itself. Now as for the actual rifle in regards of the selector 
Unfortunately, it's only right-handed selection in regards of the selector itself for safe semi and full auto. Now, unfortunately, it's not ambidextrous, but it's still easy to basically switch it using your thumb itself, or even when you're left-handed, using your index finger to push it out. Now, as per basically with the actual ambidextrous part, is the magazine release. The magazine release, you have two options to actually release in the mag itself by either using the original GNG ARP 1.0, is the grip itself using the paddle to pull out the magazine. But say for example if you don't want to use the paddle and you just want to use the finger. Well, the good news is, and part of the actual trigger guard itself, you'll see it actually is attached to the magazine release to release the mag. So, again, a lot more conveniency in regards of it. And as well to that, it's still more controllable using either ambidextrous part of your left-handed or right-handed operations. You'll notice on the actual top end from the rail to the upper receiver, it's more monolithic so you can be able to basically keep all your rail segments and estates to put in such as like the laser combo that we have here and your red dots just so you can make it more of that operator setup. As well to that on the upper you'll notice that you have a fully ambidextrous charging handle to reveal your rotary style hop up and as well to that what's nice about it compared to the G&G 2.0 and 1.0 is this is a functioning bolt catch and what goes nice than that is also changing the style of the regular boring AR-15 dust cover to this more streamlined and almost something familiar in regards of it of this competition style dust cover. Again, a lot more cleaner and sleeker in the design. I like this. So what's actually different to the ARP 3.0 and its other predecessors? For starters itself, this little button here closes the fixed stock and makes it more compact. Now this does actually come in handy if you want to transport it and basically in a smaller bag like such as your backpack in regards to to keep it compact for playing in those indoor fields that you want to go into or any close quarter fields that you want to play at. This is actually pretty nice. I've also did verify you can still shoot while it's basically folded in this position. As well as that to pop it open, just pull it out, it's locked and secured and ready to go. But where would you put the battery? And that's a good actual question. So, to put it, it's in the back end of the stock where the brace is at to put your shoulder. All you need to do is there's a button inside, you have to push down, and this releases the butt pad underneath. So in the back end, what it reveals is actually a Dean's to Tamiya connector on the back end of the stock. So, what actually fits in this? One thing I do notice in regards to the fitment itself is you can actually fit 11.1 LiPo, which is recommended for the ARP 3.0, 1000 milliamp battery in the stick type inside the actual part of the brace. Now, it's going to be still a little bit tight, but once you actually finagle with it a little bit with the spacing in the actual end where the stock is at, you'll be able to fit it in no problem. The ARP 3.0 features a new gearbox compared to the predecessors of the 2.0 and 1.0 of being what's known as the MOSFET integrated gearbox, also known in short, the MIG. So what does that mean exactly with a new one? Well, everyone had issues with basically in the previous with the actual MOSFET in the buffer tube end and regards of the battery spacing having the issue. That's not a problem for this one anymore since the actual MOSFET is now laid right behind and underneath where the pistol grip sat, basically right around here. Now, in regards of it, what's nice about that is that takes away the same situation of any battery spaces in the issue. Specifically here, now you have that space for this nice fixed stock to go along with it. And as well to that, you're still able to use the original burst setting by holding it for about three seconds on semi and you'll get your three round burst. And then to revert it back, the same as directed. All right guys, so now we're basically onto the point about magazine compatibility. Now, let's actually stop here for a second to actually talk about the new magazines that G&G would put in their ARP 3.0, specifically these two. Now, on this one, this looks like an ordinary G&G ARP magazine. Now, the actual difference is if you actually look at the transparent ones, like this one, you'll notice that each line set is actually a multi-channel system. So, what that means is the multi-channel system on the actual magazines helps do a double stagger on each single 
part of the columns. For example, this magazine holds about 68 rounds, while the original now, about the same size, holds about 170 rounds. Really impressive for the same style and same size of the original ARP magazine. Now, if you still have your other original ARP magazines, they'll actually still feed in regards of it. But again, let's go ahead and test it out. In regards of it, still fits the new ones, and this is what actually comes with the gun. This is the 170 rounders. Still fits pretty well. Let's try the PTS mags. Really secure, so it still holds in. And now for the Lancer Tactical LT35s. Unfortunately, these don't actually feed and they won't even hold. But if you have your G&G &G mags, you're still good to go. So when we actually chrono the ARP 3.0 and multiple times of other guns, we notice with 0.20 gram BBs, on average we're looking on the FPS to be around 320 to 345 feet per second. Now this is basically what your ideal setup for your indoor and CQB fields. Hey guys, so for a short compact gun, it still packs a punch for those tight end corners. So what are my final thoughts on the ARP 3.0? Well, let's stop right there and actually talk about how 2023 is always, and all, any other new year, is new year, new me. Well, new year, new me from the actual ARP 3.0. And I have to admit, I'm pretty impressive with everything else on here. I love the thick stock. I love the compact style itself. And the fact that what's really impressive to me is you can still fold the stock and still fire the weapon. Now for my DMR guys, if you're looking for a PCC, which is a pistol caliber carbine, look no further than the ARP 3.0. I'm also impressive with, is actually the magazine itself. To hold about 70 rounds on a short mag, that's actually pretty good. Give yourself a couple rounds, you'll be able to play any other field, or use this as your backup gun for a Muslim gun. So, hey, but other than that, what do you guys think about that? Drop a comment below, and also check out airsoftmaster.com if you guys want to purchase one of these. As for me, I gotta go do shipping, and unfortunately, these items have been sold. I'll catch you guys on the next time.